Good morning. Welcome to our worship service here in New St. John. Let us pray. Oh God, we are drained. Please calm our minds, heal our hearts, and take our worries away. Accept our worship, we ask, in Jesus' name. chapter and the first verse and reads let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me I want to talk this morning about a triumphant faith 
for troubled times. Triumphant faith for troubled times. <clears throat> the Bible affirms repeatedly that trouble is a fact of life that no one can escape. The Old Testament says that man days are few and full of trouble. Job 14 and 1. To his followers, Jesus said plainly, In this world, you will have trouble. But the Bible shows us that every trouble we face in life comes with an invitation to triumph over it by trusting in God in Christ. There is help and encouragement today for those who will take that invitation to make God's triumph a reality in their lives. And regardless of the trouble we face as a nation or as individuals, if we place our trust in God, we will come out triumphantly. And so we come today to one of the darkest moments in the lives of Jesus first followers. It is found in a beloved classic text, John 14. And from there we learn the first great secret of triumphing over trouble. In the previous chapter, Jesus had gathered his disciples in an upper room for what is to be their last supper together. In essence, he says to them, I have an announcement. He says, I'm going to be betrayed by one of you. And what's more, I'm leaving you. And where I'm going, you cannot come. This announcement shocks and astounds them and throws them into a panic. These are men who except for one, had given their hearts and their souls to Jesus. They had given up everything to follow him, their occupation, they give up their family and their way of life. They loved him deeply and well because he has loved them so deeply and so well. And now he says to them words they do not want to hear and cannot fathom. I'm going to be leaving you. And where I am going, you cannot come. And so now they're devastated because trouble has come. In the 14th chapter, Jesus acts immediately to help them deal with the trouble that has come. And that's the way he is. When we're in trouble, he acts immediately. He gives them <clears throat> direction and comfort First in the form of a command of trouble. And then in the form of a call to triumph. Jesus tells his disciples, do not let your heart be troubled. He addresses his disciples concerning immediately by saying something to them that none of us would have ever expected. <clears throat> right from the beginning, he makes it plain that the trouble they are feeling on the inside amidst this troubling news from the outside represents a choice. Of course, many of us find it easier to give up and to give in to trouble. Feelings on the inside when trouble comes on the outside, indeed, most of us feel we have no choice. Especially when the troubles we're facing are greater than we are and more complicated than our minds can handle. When these kinds of troubles come, we recognize how truly helpless we really are. In such a time, we inevitably find that trouble moves in and takes over and will not go away. Perhaps we do not need the reminder. But the truth is that you and I never have life under control. 
And one phone call. One phone call, a person's entire life can be changed forever. In such times it can seem that being troubled by trouble is the only possibility open to us. Jesus shows us that being troubled by trouble is not our only option. We might ask, well, what other options do do we have but look carefully first of all at what Jesus says he says don't let your heart be troubled the sense of this phrase is very strong and it's it actually means stop letting your heart be troubled the idea here is that of stopping an action or activity that has already begun and that activity is trouble on the inside that comes from the outside. The word trouble here convenes the notion of a disturbance or an agitation. It is a picture for us of a heart that is without rest. A heart whose condition is like water boiling in a pot of, of hot on a hot stove. And that it is the place the disciples find themselves in. On the basis of what they have heard, they find their hearts in motion or better yet, in commotion. But look carefully with me at how Jesus says this. This is a command that has powerful implications. By commanding the disciples to stop, Jesus is saying that when trouble comes into your life, they have both the capacity and the choice to decide to stop the trouble in their hearts. Now, trouble do not have to triumph. Trouble do not have to confuse them or worry or paralyze them with fear. And I find this to be incredible news. I never found worry to have a positive outcome. It has never helped me to solve the first problem. In fact, it has always made things worse. Positively, Jesus' command for handling trouble means that his disciples can choose to be untroubled in spite of it. Trouble on the outside must not necessarily mean anxiety or fear or confusion or defeat on the inside. Negatively, Jesus' command for handling trouble means that whenever his disciples have consistently agitated, disturbed, hard over a matter, it is evidence for a personal choice to be troubled. It is proof of a choice to be in bondage on the inside to circumstances when Jesus has made a way for us to be truly free. Let not your heart be troubled. I would imagine there are many of us living with such troubled hearts today. Hearts distressed by finances. Hearts stressed by jobs, marriage, kids, school, the future, all the past. And many believe, many believers are living in such defeat because trouble has come into their lives and they have not yet been able to find a way to defeat it. But the truth is that many of us are living with what seems to be terminally a troubled heart. And so Jesus says to you, what he says to his disciples, he says, stop. And everything within us says in response, yes, Lord, but how? Thankfully, Jesus helps us to know how with real success Jesus had to his command for trouble, a call of triumph. He goes on to say, believe in God, believe also in me. In many ways, Jesus calls his disciples to triumph in their trouble, 
by replacing the fear and the worry that trouble brings with something that is called faith. Surely that sounds churchy and simple, too simple. Jesus call to believers is simple and in a sense he calls in the midst of trouble he calls to believe does it work the answer of the Bible from literally cover to cover is yes in many ways the Bible is the story of faith triumphing over trouble again and again and again demonstrates to us that God is always positively and powerfully at work on behalf of those who trust in him. This is the essential truth behind another classic text in Romans the 8th chapter Paul says and we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Become conformed to the image of his son. God is always working all things together for a greater good. And so we can choose triumph by trusting, by replacing the fear that is natural with the faith that is supernatural. Just what is that? Jesus invites or call us to do. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. The fuller meaning of this command is keep on believing in God and keep on believing in me. Jesus shows us that faith or trust in the midst of trouble is not simply a deliberate choice to stop worrying. It is also a deliberate choice to place all of our confidence in God. We cannot see in spite of the trouble that we do see. Practically speaking, exercising faith in troubled times is an act whereby we relinquish doubt. Yes, faith chooses to say, Lord, I don't understand why this trouble has come. I don't understand what the answer is, but I relinquish the way and, and how of it all to you. This means that faith chooses not to say, Lord, first you must explain to me the way for all of this and then I will trust you. It chooses not to say, Father, you must also give me the how of your solution for my troubles to be considered and approve it before you do it. But instead, faith simply says, Sovereign God, I am not going to ask why. I may not be able to understand your answer. And I'm not going to ask you how. I, I do not dare decide for you what should be done to fix my problem. My prescription will do me more harm than good. For better for me to reply, to rely on you as my heavenly doctor, to write the prescription I need for my problems. Far better for me to wait as you write it. Wait as you deliver it and wait as you apply it to my life. Faith in troubled times involves surrendering ourselves and your trouble even when you don't know his solution. But just how do we practice that kind of surrender? Jesus suggests the first and fundamental step requires whenever trouble appears. It is the first step that we must take if we're going to experience the triumph God says can be ours. When trouble comes, we must first go and check the foundation of our faith in God. We must do the things of God upon which we have built our lives and see that they are still intact. 
And so the question would be, what are the foundations of truth? The foundation of faith. The foundation of faith, Jesus' point, is the first verse essentially consists of the person of God and who is, who God is and the work of God, what God has done and is doing and has promised to do. In other words, Jesus invites us, keep on believing in who the Father is. And what the Father has done along with what he is now doing and has promised to do. What power this prescription had is this in changing confusion and chaotic times. It's good and it's very necessary to remember that the person promised and plans of God never changes. God is the same yesterday, today. And forever. And that means that if he genuinely loved you yesterday, you can be sure that he still loves you today. If he was faithful to you yesterday, he will still be faithful to you today. And if he had power for you yesterday, he has power for you today and tomorrow. He, he's more than sufficient for any trouble that we face. Let me suggest three pairs of questions and three great truths for troubled times that believers can ask and rest in when trouble comes into their life. They will help remind us of who the God is that we trust. The violent questions and truths, questions and truths that will need, that you need when you are unexpected phone calls comes to your home. The question is, what can God do and what can God do? And the answer is that there is nothing that is impossible for the Almighty God. All the things scriptures say that God cannot do is act contrary to his own nature. For example, God cannot lie. The first great truth of, of trouble is when trouble comes, there is nothing that can keep God from helping you. Our God is an omnipotent God. He has all the power there is. And that's why it does not matter what your trouble is, how impossible it may seem to you, there is no impossibility in the economy of God. In fact, it is impossible things which come into our lives that allow us, if we walk through them with faith, we see the glory, the greatness, and the goodness of our God. And when trouble comes, it is impossible for us to remember and believe that God still has our power to help us at the point of our greatest need. The second question is, what does God know? And what does he not know? Psalms 139, the psalmist says, where can I go from the presence? If I go to heavens, you are there. If I go down to the depths, you are there. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. In the midst of trouble, God knows. God knows the trouble we are facing. Yes, he knows the pain we are feeling. And what's more, he knows the answer to our trouble. And all we need to know is that he knows the answer. Second greatest truth of the trouble is this. When trouble comes, God knows. It is important for us to remember and to believe that no trouble we are experiencing has missed God's attention or taken him by surprise. He knows the problem and its ultimate and best solution. The final question is God, does God really love me? And is there any trouble that can keep me from experiencing his love? Sometime in the midst 
of those troubles that come into our lives, we are tempted to want to know whether God cares and does not take too many dark nights, bright days that feel like dark nights, before we are tempted to say things like, if God really loved me, how can he be allowing this to come into my life? And God, have you lost your love for me? But God is careful to remind us in his word that nothing can separate us from your love. And triumph for us is in Christ Jesus. And so the third and final truth for trouble is that no trouble we are experiencing mean an end to his love and care. If we look carefully, we'll always find God and his love there. It is simply impossible for God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to be anything but a father to his children. His love remains, his love means action for our good. And done in just the right way and at just the right time. Whatever your trouble is, God will not only show up, and when he shows up, it's right on time. Every trouble we face in life comes as an invitation to triumph over it by trusting God in Christ. The invitation is received by heeding Jesus' command to stop being troubled by trouble and answer his call to trust God. We cannot see in spite of trouble we do not see. It is an invitation to call who trust Christ for eternal life to also trust him in the face of life's greatest trouble. Declare victory before the battle is over. Yes, don't get in the way of God being God. Let God be God. Sooner or later, you will have to say, I will trust Him when I can see Him, and I will trust Him when I cannot see Him, when I got money in my pocket. I trust Him when I have got a dime. I will trust Him when the way is dark and my nights are lonely and my days are cold. I will. In the Lord in troubled times. This is the Word of God. Thank you.